Good day, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 245, and tonight we are featuring Dan Krugitz and Jason Ward of Angle One Magazine. Um, I'm really excited what these guys are doing. I'm going to be pulling them up um, and all that. If you got questions, you can type them in on the right-hand side. If those of you have not seen, I'm, most of you, I'm sure you've probably seen their artwork. I probably on their uh, home pages or an FMA discussion, but they're, are, as you guys will see tonight through the interview, are doing some incredible, incredible stuff. So without further ado, let's welcome Jason and Dan. Hey guys, thanks for, uh, how are you guys doing? Thanks for coming on. Hey Dean, how hey, are you Dean. doing? Good evening. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, I don't know where you guys are, but it's absolutely last couple of days. It's been uh, single digits here. Just absolutely. <laughs> yeah, we've been as uh, cold as minus 30 uh, Celsius here. So <laughs> I'd start crying. <laughs> Just crying. Good old Canadian weather. Yeah, those are days like you open the door and um, your face hurts. <laughs> At least <Yeah>. mine. <laughs> been kind of cold here in eastern pennsylvania the last few days but nothing compared to what jay's dealing with up there in canada so oh, gosh. You know. yeah that's i can't imagine that like definitely yeah, wow <laughs> so folks are you watching please tell us where you're watching from smash that like button we're just getting started and again if you guys missed the intro um these fine guys are doing a, a great project called angle one magazine they're going to be covering basically FMA teachers and all that. We're going to get really into detail about that. But before we do that, we're going to kind of cover their FMA journey. Obviously, these guys are practitioners as well as before being publishers, what have you. And through being a practitioner is kind of what segue them into doing this. So we're going to get started here and um, and all that. So um, I know you both come from a, you know extensive Chinese martial art background and if i'm not mistaken that's how you guys initially met is that am i correct yeah that's going uh, back to about uh was that 99 2000 somewhere in that time period yeah around there around 2099 yeah okay. um so i had actually started tra traveling down to pennsylvania to train under uh, a teacher and then uh shortly after dan had joined up and uh we uh we were training in the chinese style was a kind of a Chinese Kung Fu Kempo hybrid. And um, uh, another person we trained with was uh, our brother, Steve Reichard. And, you know, we got to uh, do a lot of traveling and training together. Mm. Okay. And that's led to quite a few other adventures over the years, of course, which uh, wow. we'll yeah. get shortly here as we're talking about some of the other stuff we're getting into. But uh, yeah, that was the beginning of two decades between the three of us. I, of, say, uh, um, I know you guys shared this with me at one point but i didn't realize it went back um i didn't it went, it went back that far like i would have never guessed 99 or, or or something like that so that i mean that's wow that's impressive i mean that's <laughs> yeah. um D dan remembers when my daughter was just a year old and now she's going to be 21. um so you know wow. it's, uh, it's crazy so yeah. when, was, we, okay, we, when was the last time you guys kind of actually physically uh saw each other um, that would have been February of 2020 when, uh, just before the, the pandemic really, uh, fired up hard. Um, I was down, uh, in, uh, the Allentown area training with, uh, Steve and Dan and, uh, you know, having a, a good old time like we do as brothers do. And then, uh, Steve and I traveled up to, uh, to New York, uh, to train in a Chinese art called Zhongshan Dao, Edie Tren. Okay. Um, so we were doing that and Dan trains in that art as well, uh, with us. Um, so yeah, so we, it's been a few years since we've seen each other, uh, yeah. live in person. Yeah. Most, yeah. mostly due to pandemic restrictions. If I remember correctly, Jay, you can't even get into the country, like get into the U S at this moment. And I can't travel. Yeah. There's there, there's some, there's some folks that can travel. Um, just, there's yeah. a lot of headaches I'm hearing coming back over the border. Uh, so it's not just it's not a good time to uh, to risk it with my job because uh, you know my job is once you go over the border you you have to uh, be quarantined for two weeks so it's uh, it's not something that's in the books for me at this point. 
No, matter of fact, I've looked, you know, because I you know, definitely would like to get up to you guys. And if um, if you're not vaccinated, you're not going anywhere as far as uh, going into Canada. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty consistent with everything you guys are saying as far as the travel back and forth. So it's been some time. But obviously you guys are managing. I mean, you guys, it sounds like you guys are in constant contact with, with one another and uh, what have you as far as, you know, not just training, but, of course, the project where you guys, you guys are working on and we're going to definitely absolutely cover and get to. Um, so what, let's yeah, jump into. If we're into, not training, we're talking every day. Talking about training, talking about the magazine, talking about all sorts of other life, the universe, and everything. You know, it's uh, yeah, exactly. Mostly yeah, training are, uh, in the magazine. <laughs> yeah, no, you guys are absolutely. So let's. Um, okay, so what? Okay, so let's. This is gonna be for both of you, as many of the questions will be throughout this. What? Um. Okay, your first FMA experience. Who, when, and where? All right, Dan, Jake, chronologically, I think that that would be you since you got into it, uh, you know, earlier than I did. So um, back in uh, 1989, I um, uh, had moved up to Barrie and I decided I wanted to uh, resume training up here, uh, traveling to Toronto at the time. You know, it wasn't a great thing for me. I was only 15. So um, there was a local school that was teaching the Inosanto uh, Kali and as well as Silat, uh, boxing, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So, you know, this school had a whole bunch of things that I was fascinated in reading the magazines. And uh, the school was actually affiliated through John Maidment, um, uh, through his uh, group. And um, I started off with that. Uh, and then I actually moved down to North Carolina. And um, while I was down there, I was doing some modern arnis uh, with a friend. And then uh, I took a little bit of a hiatus, um, you know, due to, you know, negativity and things like that where I was. Um, and then I, uh, I, you know, wanted to really get back into it. And um, I was talking to Mark Wiley, Guru Mark Wiley, um, and uh, he made a comment about wanting students, uh, you know, uh, to come down and visit and things like mm -hmm. that. And I said, well, I would come and visit you if you're close by. And he's like, well, I'm, you know, just uh, north of Philly. And I was like, I go down to Allentown all the time. And uh, that's when I uh, started training Five Ancestor Fist Kung Fu with him, as well uh, as um, okay. doing his online DLP program for Integrated Screamer. And then just snowballed uh, in the last year, I came back full time, um, you know, to the community. Mm, nice. So uh, before we segue to the other question, like about the experience, uh, Dan, same question for you. All right. First FMA for me would be uh, indirectly Mark Wiley. Uh, I read the Kabbalah Serata Esprima book uh, when I was, you know, into that that uh, Chinese system I'd been with for a while and kind of piqued my interest. And I thought this stuff sounds really cool. I hope I get a chance to do some of this someday. Um, yeah. And it kind of just that's where it stayed for a little while. And then um, <clears throat> started looking at uh, some of Paulo Rubio's stuff that he was putting out through Aperture. And he was really, you know, promoting and, and highlighting a lot of the FMA. Um, I want to say this is going back probably 12 years or so um, when he first started uh, putting out a lot of his FMA content. And that really kind of reignited that curiosity about mm -hmm. FMA. So spent some time looking around, Googling. And then my first actual uh, class was in FCS Kali with Kyle McKimmy, who runs the oh, so Pennsylvania training group. Yes. Yeah. And um, Kyle was my, my first FMA teacher and uh, he was doing a lot of FCS and uh, through some seminars and things he set up. I also got introduced to a little bit of um, lightning scientific, which I didn't I didn't train. But, you know, there were some practitioners of lightning scientific who came in from New Jersey um, for some of the seminars. And I did a couple of Balintawak seminars and classes as well. Um, and then when the pandemic happened and things moved online, I uh, um, reached out to another system that had really caught my interest. That would be the, the Visayan style Corto Cadena. Mm. And uh, I reached out to them and started doing some online sessions with Guru Jay Pugao. Uh, I want to say that was October of 2020. Yeah. 
And this yeah, is where man. everything started to really snowball for the two of us uh, this back is, in the FMA world. This is where this is where FMA went from a curiosity to something yeah. more like uh, an obsession. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That's you know. So, um, just want let's just take a moment to say hello to some folks here. We got plenty of people, folks. Yes, if you're watching, please tell you where you're watching from and smash that like button. We're just getting started. We got Daniel Hill. From Ontario. Hey, Dan. Eric hey, Nathan. We Eric. got Guru Tom Pena. We got Brian Regis. Three of, three of the FMA discussion people are here. We got Nathan Williams and Miguel Ruby. Hey, Maestro from Sacramento, California. So, you know, all right. So from that first, okay, you're coming from a Chinese background. You know, you're getting the system with weapons and all that. You know, you know what stood out? You know what I mean? Like, what was it like an immediate far as reflection looking back like wow you know this this really stood out this is different you know not and i'm not and of course i know the chinese have weapons and I, you know and, I, and i'm yeah. not i don't get that misconstrued misconstrued that you know I'm, I'm not alluding to they don't but what was glaring like far as compare and contrast well uh the biggest thing um for example in the in the kung fu system that dan and i came from um we um uh, had, had another system called chiling pai kung fu and in that system, there's a knife fighting um, element to it. Uh, it's called Bat Sao Gong. So I had learned that originally from uh, Glenn Kwan, who is my Kempo teacher, um, and uh, Nathan Williams there. He's uh, my brother in that system. Um, so I was learning the Bat Sao Gong stuff from, uh, from Master Kwan. And then I also um, trained uh, in the same teacher that Dan and I had in that system as well. So I was very familiar with knife um, and some stick at that point uh, from the Inosano days. Um, but what, what happened was the, the sense of how you drill the attributes, how you really get to the meat and potatoes of the system was radically different for, for my journey. Um, so when I, uh, when I wanted to get back into it, um, you know, Guru Mark Wiley's system was very logical, very progressive. And, um, you know, uh, Dan had started uh, with uh, Guru Jay, and every day he was talking about it. So I had to really sort of look at that. And um, one of the things I noticed was the commonalities between our past and mm -hmm. where we wanted to go. So it was like an evolution in, in our education. Okay, okay. How about you, Dan? What, what was um, anything glaring? That initially stood out or is like the difference from coming from the Chinese background? Yeah, the first thing, uh, I think there were a couple things. One was, you know, the emphasis on mobility rather than over stability. Like in a lot of the Chinese systems, mm -hmm. you're working to develop a route. And in a lot of the FMA systems, you know, your footwork has to be a lot more mobile to to keep range get out of the way stuff like that the other thing was just the different angles of attack that are available to you when you're holding a stick or a blade um you know somebody's coming down at you this way empty hand you can parry that it gets it out of the way you do that they're holding a stick and a flick of the wrist brings it on a completely different angle and so one of the first things that really kind of hooked me on it was just the the mental aspect of okay if i'm here what's available, what's not available. If the other person's in this position, what's available, what's not available. And after so many years of looking at that through some of the other arts I had trained, putting the stick in the hand really opened up a whole new world of possibilities. Yeah. Um, and so I just got a little bit obsessed with um, what if, you know, and thinking through all the different trajectories and angles and possibilities. And it just opened up a whole new world of, you know, I. I been in the arts about 20 years at that point when I walked into my first. Yeah, uh, right. It's not like you're like a new FMA class. And it was like, ah, there's all this new stuff to explore. This yeah. is amazing. So yeah. I just, you know, really, really connected with it right away just for the new challenge and all the new uh, variables that you have to consider. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's awesome. Yeah. And now, I mean, obviously, you guys are hook, line, and sinker. I mean, you guys can't get enough. I mean, you guys are like, you're over here, you're over there, you're doing this. <laughs> you yeah, I mean, are, uh, yeah. I mean, and that's actually, um, that's something that uh, we found very fascinating because Dan and I uh, and Steve, we talk every day. So Dan had regularly been talking about uh, the science style. Mm -hmm. And uh, Stevie, he had trained the science style under a gentleman named Bernard Langan. 
um, who was another one of Sonny Umpad's uh, uh, students. So it was a very mm -hmm. small world for us. We we're always talking about the same things. And, uh, you know, Steve uh, has, you know, helped guide us as well throughout the years, uh, being our older brother. Um, so, you know, things started snowballing. And then uh, during the pandemic, Dan's like, oh, you got to check out this and this and this. And I'm like, yeah, and you got to check out this. And we ended up um, sort of really throwing uh, stuff at the wall to see where are we going to go with this. And mm -hmm. uh, I had met uh, Guru Joe Apostol, started training with him in Balintawak. Mm -hmm. um, I started joining Dan uh, with Guru Jay and Visayan style. Mm -hmm. uh, we were both do, uh, doing the online uh, Tecampo Unos Dos Tres original mm -hmm. system. Uh, right. And then um, I had been doing some uh, online seminars with Montini in Estocada de Campo. Uh, so things yeah. sort of just blew up real quick. And, yeah. um, you know, because we're such martial arts addicts, uh, we're still doing Kung Fu as well as the FMA. So, you know, it's like, it's like the train is in full speed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like I the, most recent, uh, the most recent addition there would be KI. Yes. What's Guru that? Brand. Guru Brand. <laughs> um, that is a yeah. Filipino Guru style. Brand, um, you, you may have heard of it, Dean. <laughs> There's a few books out there, you know, if you're interested. Yeah. So KI, I'll, is that... I'll have to send you some books. It's <laughs> a abbreviation for what? Um, let me see. That would be uh, Kali Ilustrissimo, I think. <laughs> um, Brandon, but yeah, Brandon so, who? <laughs> uh, that would be Mr. Brandon Ricketts to you. <laughs> he's, a great, he's a great guy. I think you two would really hit it off. Yeah, you should talk. Oh, you think, we, we, you think me and him would be compatible? We would get I think so. I think so. <laughs> Just so, but yeah, no, right, our journey folks jumping in. great. We got Dana. Hey, there's Guru Justin. Yes, and we got He's an Spencer awesome G, who will be coming with. on actually, I think at the end of this month, last Sunday, I, I believe. Uh, and then we got oh my man uh, Robbie from uh, Portland, Robbie Tumbaga. Um, but uh, who actually I think just started with Brandon too, um, if I'm awesome. not mistaken. Uh, but uh, so okay, I mean, so you guys got. I mean, you guys are obviously loving FMA and all that. Um, you know, what, if you, you know, what is it like? What, you know, what's keeping you guys? I mean, like, what's, what's making you guys seek out more or different lanes or checking this or checking that? I mean, like, what, you know, if you had to sum it up in a couple words, what would you say? I can sum it up easily. I'm going to blame uh, Guru Mark Wiley on this one. Um, he, yeah, we um, could blame him for a while. <laughs> he he was a heavy influence um, yeah. way back in the day. Um, I had wanted to study Five Ancestor Fist, and uh, but really, I was really influenced by a lot of his writings in the magazines and then his books. Um, you know, and the other day during our test, I was talking about uh, Inside Kung Fu magazine and uh, you know Guru Burton Richardson's uh, Burt mm. Offerings column. I mean, these are things I look forward to every day. And there was a part of me that always wanted to do research. Um, I have a library right now of martial arts books, uh, around a thousand books. And, uh, you know, I, I'm always researching, investigating. And I think that's more of, um, you know, there's Jason, the martial artist, but then there's also Jason, the, the guy that wants to research the histories, traditions, philosophies of martial arts. And that's something actually that um, with Glenn Kwan, every single certificate that he gave out, um, he made a, a statement that said, the student promises to research the histories, traditions, and philosophies ah, okay. of the martial arts. So, you know, when it came to a form, I would go ask somebody from a different style that has that same form, how does that work? You know, what's, what version do you do and things like that? So I ended up learning, you know, multiple versions of the same form, um, mm -hmm. you know, and started investigating things, um, you know, just on a uh, on a history and tradition kind of point of view, and I think that's part of part of what drove me is uh, is you know watching guys like Mark Wiley uh, travel all over the world, train under all these people, Gosh. you know, and and getting that that real understanding from the academic point of view. He incredibly, is, he is. incredibly influential. I mean, that first yeah. book came out. I mean, in so many ways. Um, so he just yeah. made a recent post from a discussion. His book came up and. Um, I just know for absolute, you know, um, I, well, I'm pretty sure of this, uh, that, you know, he got a lot of those old grandmasters exposed, people coming from the West, and it was due to his book. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it was 100% mm -hmm. due to that book. Oh, know? hands down, hands down. 
you know. I mean, I, I actually have multiple copies of some of his books because the original copy mm -hmm. got worn out. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about you, Dan? I mean, like, if you could, like, in a few words, I mean, like, you know, what what's the, um, what's, you know, what is it? What's the, what's the intoxicating thing about it that's keeping you, like, want more and more and venturing out and bouncing around and what have you? Uh, I mean, one, it's it's like I alluded to before, there's that, that mental piece that, you know, how do you solve these different problems? Every, every weapon comes with a slightly different set of considerations. Um, I guess, two, it's fun. You know, I just enjoy that challenge of it. Um, and then three, <clears throat> what I've started to notice as I'm looking at the various styles that I'm involved with is there's a lot of similarities as far as the problems that they're dealing with, but there's mm. slight variations in how they approach it. Yeah. Such as uh, like in the Fasayan style, doing the, what they call the half body pendulum or, or more of an elastico to create that range. Mm. Where in KI, it's the Ritterata footwork that gets you that one inch, you know, just out of range. Yeah. And the compo, you know, they have their, their approach as well. And they all deal with that, that, challenge of how do you stay at just the right range that you are not maximum opportunity they're yeah. opened up you know for a hit uh, and so looking at at similarities and differences and kind of cross-referencing a couple of different styles um has helped me kind of see that there's more than one way to solve each problem but then there's also um the similarities of um those considerations, you know, looking at how do I stay just out of range? How do I put myself in a better position, the footwork, mm. the body angulation, all that. Uh, and then there's like different systems emphasize different things. Sure. Like a one small example, let me grab my stick here. Now in Decompo, they talk about Hayang versus Kolo, just going from pronated to a supinated grip and how that puts you on the other side, you know, 180 or so from where you were and then you know every system does that but not every system has a specific name for it or or emphasizes it to the same extent and that's yeah. just one you know, of, a, of you know several examples but when you see something like that in one system and you're like ah okay well they named it so that puts my awareness a little bit more to that thing okay. then you see it in other places and you go, okay, yeah, this is they may be enlightened or... thinking about it in a specific way. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what you learn in one system crosses over into another and helps you mm -hmm. see some of those things in a different light. Yeah, that's a good point. Right. Maybe because maybe because of the fact they gave it like a certain name and you know and, and gave significance to it, now you're you're probably more readily to see it in other in other places, other systems, uh, and all that. Um so it's like when you're driving down the street and if somebody says, you know, if, if, if somebody's driving down the street and somebody's like, oh, I want to buy one of those cars and you've never seen that model before. Yeah. You start to see it all over the place. Yeah, right, right. Because they brought recognition to it. Sure, sure. Exactly. Uh, it's the, kind of the same idea. Yeah. Yeah. You, so think you're being, uh, you think you're being original. You know, you're the first guy in the, in the neighborhood to have it. And then next thing you know, you realize. You're yeah. The then first guy. Yeah. You're, you're anything but original. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what do you. So status quo. All right, Jason, status quo. What systems are you training in? <laughs> um, all right, so let's see. Um, so I've been doing the online seminars with uh, Montini Nesto Cata de Campo, uh, Blint Walk with Guru Joe, yeah. uh, De Campo Original with Maestro Paolo Pagling. Yeah. Um, I have signed up um, a while ago for the online version of Bernas Sesto Cadas, um, Design Style with Guru Jay. Mm. Um, uh, integrated Scream, of course, with uh, Guru Mark Wiley and uh, KI with Guru Brandon. Um, so wow. seven, seven Filipino systems. Um, but then also Chinese wise, uh, Zhong Shindao Yili Tren, uh, mm. Five Ancestor Fist, and then also uh, Southern Mantis. Uh, so, you know, it's it's sort of some are more intensive than others and some are, are less, mm -hmm. but uh, that's what's on my plate. And, so is, is my and, and it still... sounds like a lot, but um, believe it or not, I actually accomplish a lot of this through, um, there's a guy named Ken Wilbur who's a philosopher and he has these things called uh, one minute, three minute, five minute modules. Okay. So a lot of times, you know, for example, if I'm working, um, 
you know, uh, something from Mestocato de Campo, I'll have one minute and I'll just work, for example, boss one or boss two for that mm -hmm. one minute uh, or five minutes. And I get these little minute training sessions in and that keeps the ball rolling because one thing, um, you know, our, our teacher uh, used to tell us uh, back in the day in the Kung Fu was if you train for one day, you're only going to get one day's worth of training. But if you take a day off, you're going to lose three days worth of training. Mm. So the idea being, you know, you know, Rolling Stone doesn't gather moss, right? So keep moving. Yeah, but I think you're doing and, just uh, doing a little. Sure, sure. Right. Exactly. You know, um, is, is, is Montini, is he still doing seminars or no? So he does these online webinars and they're, they're fantastic. And, you know, for what you're getting and who you're getting it from, they're, they're horribly underpriced. Um, yeah, you know, yeah. they're, they're usually around 40 or $50 US and you're getting an hour uh, session four times. Wow. Um, you know, yeah. so, uh, you know, he takes you through a lot of material and, um, uh, you know, I've used his material when fighting, um, you know, a lot of it works great. So yeah, it's, it's definitely worth it. And I'm actually looking at, um, I just hosted one, uh, this year, oh, well, last year, um, uh, for some of, uh, my students, uh, in the Chinese martial arts and they, uh, they took part in it and I'm looking at doing it again. So remember I did the one with you sign me up for yeah, one. Exactly. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. 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 So yeah. he does a lot of those, um, you know, from time to time, uh, you'll get like good 10 a group of 10 people and, and it's, it's well worth it. Yeah. 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 Uh, Dan, status quo. What are you, uh, besides the KI, what are you doing? You're still doing the sign. Yeah. I'm doing the, the sign style with, uh, Guru J, uh, the Tecampo, uh, because of daylight savings time, that, that, uh, window of, of the, you know, the live session, isn't going to work again for me till the spring, but I still have the online course, uh, you know, the pre-recorded work. So I'm working through that, uh, doing the KI with Guru Brandon, mm. um, Zongs and Dao with our our friend and my teacher Stevie, yeah. and uh, a little bit of boxing. Haven't haven't had a class in a while since pre-pandemic, but a mm. friend of mine uh, who lives right down the way, a couple blocks, you know, a couple blocks down from me is a, a boxing coach, and I've done oh, okay private classes with him as well. And I was loving it, but you know, time and money just haven't, uh, haven't gotten back into it yet, but yeah, I love yeah. that. I want to get, get some more of that under my belt at some point. You know, it becomes like a balancing act, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> but, uh, all right, now we're going to segue into angle one. Fun stuff. <laughs> so if I recall boring, guys. correctly, I think it was late summer. Mm -hmm. Jason, you called me and you pitched this idea to me. If I'm not, if I'm recollecting everything correctly, and, you are. Um, and it was like, hey, I got this idea. And I was like, sure. And you pitched uh, the idea, and I thought it was fantastic, knowing that at the time there was a current void in the written uh, aspect. And um, yeah, and I, and it's kind of, um, I think from that point on, the wheels started turning. You made a couple posts. Yep. You made a subsequent post, which really kind of blew things out of the water. And mm -hmm. kind of this is uh, where we're at. So is, am I recollecting? Is that far as chronologically speaking? Is that oh, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. So basically, um, you know, the genesis of it was um, I work at the, uh, the Honda plant in Alliston. So I do a lot of hours. I'm a, I'm a supervisor now. At the time, I was section leader. But, you know, you're working a lot of hours. And a lot of times when you come home, you know, you're, you're fried. And you want something to just de-stress your day mm. from. And um, I, uh, I grew up uh, loving to draw and doing artwork and things like that. And I've always loved uh, goofing around on the computer. Um, and back in 2014, I was going to do for, for the Chinese martial arts, I was going to do... Um, a magazine and it was actually called the Dragon's Way Journal. And um, what happened was we, we struggled to get Chinese stylists. Okay. Um, it was just it was just a horrible fight to try to get the people that, you know, um, that would share. So we opened it up um, a little further and then it started to pick up a little bit of speed. And we got guys like Alan Pittman, who's a famous uh, author, um, as well as Andrea Falk. Um, and, and, you know, Guru Mark Wiley, uh, as well mm -hmm. as, um, uh, his teacher, Alex Cole helped out. Um, 
so we we got this thing going um and uh it was it was a it was a pretty good issue i mean there was a couple hundred people that uh that got a copy of it it was all for free um it was just a, a one-time sort of plan well i had put that on the back burner um for a while and i decided you know what i really want to do writing like like guru mark does um, mm. but i want to really do more of the artwork part as well so i had the idea well what if you know, we bring people in from the FMA community because it seems more open than than I remember. And, um, you know, we pitched the idea to a couple people, uh, you know, Guru Joe, uh, I talked to him a um, few times and and and, uh, and Paulo and uh, they were supportive right off the hop because um, I just started introducing myself to them um, mm. and I just started training with Guru Joe. So really, um, you know, it, it started uh, really slow. It was an idea and I thought, eh, I might get maybe between five and 10 people and it's just an art project. Well, after one particular post on your forum, it just started, we started getting emails and emails and, and yeah. Facebook friend requests. And it was like, holy cow, like, yes, how that person friended me? Like, who am I? Like, yeah, I'm yeah, nobody, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so what happened was it just started picking up speed and, um, you know, we got some really cool people that are on board. Um, and uh, right now, you know, Dan and I are at the point where we're like, all right, let's just focus on issue one. Because my initial um, foolishness was one issue, put everybody in it. And Dan's yeah, like, that okay, stop. I think, I think when we got our, yeah, because, uh, you know, Jay had initially asked me to participate in this a little bit before we contacted you the first time. He was like, hey, I want to do this art project, put together a magazine. Do you want to help out? I said, of course, you know, I'll jump in and help out. This sounds like fun. Um, and as I, I mentioned in the uh, the test run of this one, you know, I'm an English teacher. So right. I was like, you know, I can certainly help out with proofreading, editing, you know, working with the writers, um, stuff like that. And then we were going back and forth on it. I think the first post happened. And, you know, Jay, like he said, he's been thinking, you know, five, ten, maybe a dozen people mm. will put them all in one issue, just send it out there and we're good. Um, I think it was when we hit number 27. When I said, yep. this isn't this isn't going to be one issue. I yeah, think I Jay at that point was like, yeah, we, we can still make it happen. It'll be a pretty big file, you know, when we release it as a digital magazine. But we can we can. I said, no, because this isn't going to slow down. This is going to keep going for a little while here. Yeah. No, it's going to. Yeah. yeah. And now we're looking at uh, five issues in 2022. Yeah. Like I told you guys, we you know, if if the workflow yeah. keeps keeps going and we're able to keep on top of it. Um, yeah. Yeah, when you we guys, had 70 people reach out in total. No, I'm not surprised. When you guys asked to... 70 people so far. Prepared, you guys are going to get slammed. <laughs> and, well, you know what? Yeah. That'll be great. Um, mm. But let, let's uh, just keep one thing in mind. You know, we're not experts in the Filipino martial arts. We're coming at this from the fan uh, point of view. Yeah, but I think you guys have been so, transparent. You guys, you guys, have, you know, people are seeing yeah. that. You guys, have, mm -hmm. you guys have exercised transparency. Nobody's thinking that you guys are. I've yet to hear anything regarding those lines like, like that. So I, I think people really are seeing the integrity that you guys are bringing forward. You know, and all that. I think that definitely goes out saying. But you know what. You know, so was that the all inspiration for it? Was kind of like a previous projects that you kind of indulged in, and you kind of wanted to bring it to the FMA forefront. Is that kind of the idea? Well, yeah, it was. It was one part the the, the project. You know, coming home, having a, a de-stressing moment because you know a lot of times I come home, it's three o'clock in the morning, and everybody's asleep, and you know Netflix could be a wonderful option for um, for me to you know get tired and then finally go to sleep. But realistically, I enjoy, you know, artwork. So that was a big thing. Um, but the other thing, like I said, is the influence of Guru Mark. I've always wanted to be a writer um, uh, yeah. in the martial arts. And I actually wrote um, a couple of mini books myself. I wrote a Tai Chi book and uh, a couple other uh, little manuals over the years. And uh, I actually ended up with a book on Kempo um, uh, that I had uh, published uh, at one point. Uh, I think it's still on Amazon. I'm not sure. I haven't had any royalties in a while, so it's not the greatest book. Um, but um, but what what was happening was the merging of my writing desire and my artwork desire sort of said, "You need to do this." Um, yeah, this yeah. Is, this is a thing. No, this is going to be. Um, 
when you guys pitched it to me, I, I, I had not, you know, I just knew, you know, of the void and the void being, of course, that there's just really no written coverage currently speaking. I mean, when Steve Dowd client closed up shop on FMA informative, you know, there, you know, that was pretty as far as I'm with the exception of magazines, you know, you know, blurbs here and there as far as, but, you know, I mean, his whole thing was dedicated to, you know, just FMA practitioners that could submit stuff. I mean, I submitted a couple things to him over the years, but, you know, it's, it was a sad thing, you know, sad state of affairs. I remember him like distinctly say, Hey, look, you know, I'm not getting any, uh, nobody submitting anything. I, I'm going to close up. And I just couldn't believe that this whole community, nobody was submitting anything. It just, it was just mind boggling that, you know, like here's our only source of written content that comes out on a monthly thing and nobody is freaking like contributing. It, I was just, it was blown. So you guys are, I think you're going to fill that void nicely. And I think you guys also are coming from a really different avenue and based on the artwork, which I'm going to be showing in a bit here to them. Yeah. Well, I think also too, the community has changed from what I understand. Like I came into FMA in 2017, January yeah. of 2017. So pretty much exactly five years ago, but the stories I've heard about some of the, uh, you know, politics and, and stuff like that before I got involved, I, I haven't seen that, you know, like I said, some of my first uh, real exposure was Paulo Rubio's, you know, work on Aperture. And I saw that community. And then, you know, in the, I guess, very early in the pandemic, is that when you started up the, uh, the podcast here, like 2020? Actually, my first, it, right actually, it that. was pre, my first episode was late October, 2019. Okay. Subsequent March. So the community that the community that grew up around you know basically you and, and Paulo Rubio's forums, um, it's overwhelmingly positive. You know, I look forward every day to uh, jumping on Facebook and checking out the forums and seeing what people are sharing and talking about and you know discussing different uh, you know the history, the philosophy, the you know specific drills, whatever it yeah. is. And everybody seems to be pretty you know, for the most part, really um, supportive and, and positive. It, so I and think that makes never it made discussion because there's no other way that's acceptable. Otherwise, you get booted. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm mean, just going to be honest with you. Not all the other forms are like that. They're, uh, they're not. I, I've seen they, that firsthand. You know, like like there's there's a the few, biggest man. thing is, is leadership, though, right? Like, if you don't oh, have, you have, have the leader to stand to up, like, yeah, and you, you have to have somebody to stand up and say, no, this is not going to happen. Yeah, absolutely. And, right. You know, like, yeah. um, that's one thing um, with Glenn Kwan, uh, he taught me a long time ago that, you know, be open to everybody. We used to call it dojo rating, where he'd be like, we'd show up to class and he's like, all right, everybody, let's get in the car. We're going to this guy's school and we're going to go train with him. And we'd show mm -hmm. up and, you know, the rule was you don't wear your belt, whatever color it was. You put on the white belt, you walk on the floor and you train under that guy. So, you know, you have to have a leader that's, that's showing you that that togetherness 100%. is the right yeah. way. Um, because that's why I, I, uh, I took a break was the politics and watching two guys that were very good friends. And when, uh, Grandmaster Remy Krasas died, you know, there was a bit of a splinter that happened and this friend couldn't hang out with this friend anymore. And it was like, Whoa, wait a minute. These guys have been friends for a long yeah, time, you know? Yeah. And, um, that's the kind of negativity that we don't need. So when I came back into FMA and I saw this community, like, I'm sorry, but every martial arts community, I, I'm not trying to knock them, but they have something that they need to pay attention to here because the FMA community is doing something that no one else is really truly doing. Um, yeah. You know, I was just looking at a post on a Chinese forum where, you know, somebody was talking about chambering their, their hand, you know, whether they're chambering high or low or in the front or having the hand in front and the amount of backbiting that happened and, and you know, slamming people and negativity. Over a hand horrible. position. Over a hand position. And, uh, you know, what I'm seeing on, on uh, most um, FMA uh, discussions, especially your forum, um, you know, so aptly named, uh, is, is people going, that's a cool idea. Let me check that out. Yeah. And um, stuff, you know, for example, um, another shout out to the Boudoir guys. They're phenomenal. The stuff mm -hmm. that they're doing, like the conversation they're having with people, it, they're very yeah. open minded. 
and that's what yeah, needs it, to happen. But it comes from a leader, like you said, because here's the thing, like I've been part of forums, man, where you apps are seeing there's virtually there's moderators, but they're not really moderating. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. They're yeah. just they're not really doing anything. They're, they're so tolerators. So they allow it to go and then people see it's okay. So you kind of get that snowball effect where you have to get right in there and say, no, I'm sorry, this is not tolerated. And then people start to see it. Like they start to see the zero tolerance and they start to know like, hey, you know, you, you can't get away with this here. You know what I mean? Like this is not the place. And and people just kind of fall in line after a while. You know what I mean? Because they just know like what's tolerated, what's not. And like you mentioned, it leads to open dialogue, it, it, you know, where people can come in and express themselves without fear, you know, getting ganged up on or, you know, or whatever, right. perhaps maybe not calling something in the correct verbiage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, um, it's an angle yeah. two. No, it's an angle four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Jesus. So, um, all right. So, yeah. So I feel you guys are you're filling in this this void and all that. So what, um, so you guys kind of touched on it. Right? So Dan, like what, like what were your guys initial goals before you guys were getting overwhelmed with 70 plus people before you even set, like even got feedback from anybody or got a list of names who you're going to do, like what were your guys, just your basic initial goals? Well, I had seen the, the previous magazine that Jay put out for the Chinese arts and, and, uh, so I kind of knew what he had in mind. You know, I had an idea what that looked like and, and everything else. So I thought, yeah, you know, I can I can help jump in. I'll I'll do some proofreading, some editing, uh, you know, work with the writers. If I see any spots where I think things should be clarified and give that feedback and, and, and go back and forth. And then I thought, you know, it'd be cool to just put one of these out there as a thank you to the FMA community that for the last five years, you know, which we love the the uh the unity, the brotherhood, you know, that exists here in the FMA community between Aperture and, you know, FMA discussion um, and, and all the people that we've met, all the people that we've trained under, all the people that we've trained with. And I thought, yeah, this would be awesome. You know, let's put this project together and just put it out there. And it's like, here's a little thank you, a little something we put together just to give something back to the community yeah. that we're getting so much out of, you know, and so much, uh, you know, just enjoy participating with that community. So we really just wanted to to do something to give a little back. And I've been thinking about some different ways to do that as well. And when Jay pitched the project, I was like, this is perfect. Let's do this. Yeah. He wanted to focus on the design, the graphic design and the artwork of it. I can focus on the, uh, you know, the content as far as, you know, my skill set goes. And between the two of us, it seemed like a natural fit. Mm, definitely. I thought so. I mean, the so way that, I was was the initial, that was the initial plan when I thought we were still just talking about maybe 10 or a dozen. So yeah, like, you know, like a little <laughs> finger play, Hey, you know, we'll give this little back to the community. And then all of a sudden, you know, tidal wave of uh, oh, messages yeah, come it's in. Crazy. You know, you know, between people submitting, submitting articles and then people who wanted to do, um, you know, interviews with us, generating those interview questions. And then, you know, I, I guess we can get into the we can get into the process a little bit at some point, but we've learned a few things about that along the way. Because well, when you think you're going to be helping, you know, maybe ten or twelve people, and all of a sudden you're trying to to maintain the uh, information and workflow and communication between sixty five or seventy, that changes things quite a bit. No, you know, you know I, I can tell you, like, you know, when I first went into this, like the first. First six months was just it was kind of you know FMA discussion because I you know I I wasn't really branding it I, I just you know I just you know I, it was a learning curve for me to be quite honest I mean I'd never yeah. done this before and I was just kind of you know swinging and I was I was as I was going you know I hardly had any like I didn't have Paulo's background or hardly you know what I mean I just I had it myself you know I was able to but. When the name started coming in, hey, you should just do this. And my organization wasn't the greatest. I mean, it was overwhelming. Mm -hmm. Like, it was overwhelming. Like, I'm seeing this list of people coming in, and then I'm trying to, like, figure out, like, when am I going to get to these interviews? And, you know, and I mean, it was it was overwhelming. You know what I mean? So, um, it, so it, it really kicked off, like, some organizational skill set that I had to implement because I was just, you know, I was just – 
like winging it and the winging it wasn't cut yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know? Yeah, we had that same exact moment where it was like, all right, we got to put some things in place here or else we're going to get lost in what we're doing. Yeah, so and you're going to forget people that you put down like that was, you know, I got to be honest, like I did that once or twice. And that's, you know, man, that's not a good feeling, man. You know, you, you left somebody out that yeah. you didn't obviously mean to. You know, I mean, yeah, that, and, and, you know, that's that's what we don't want to do is we don't want yeah. to, you know anybody to get the impression that we're ignoring them right now it's it's sure, literally sure. we're talking we're talking 70 people you know that's that's over 10 times what we thought we'd get yeah right from your so, initial like what you yeah. thought your, your goals so you know for example um you know the first issue was all right what do we have in bulk right now that we can put out an issue to get the ball rolling because some things you know we're, we're seeing the interview happen and it's, it's, it's not quite developing the way we want it to. So it's like, all right, we need to come up with some better questions here, or maybe we need to do a little more digging into, you know, that system to get better questions or, you know, um, you know, to, uh, to steal. Um, there, there's a, there, there's a great way of looking at how to learn to ask questions is steal the other interviews. Look at how they're asking questions. Look at the tempo. Look at, you know, where are they leading? Is there a connecting uh, connecting point between each question? Mm -hmm. And then write these ideas down and, and then take that and make it your own. And uh, that's one of the processes that we're, we're working on right now. You guys should is, all right. see any of the guys, if, if I interview them, and you guys are more than welcome to, you know, if you give me the names, I can give you the number. Hey, we'll check out the interview and see what you can extrapolate from it. You know what I mean? For sure, for sure. And you know what? I'll be I'll be honest. Like you, your your podcast has been one of the big influencers for us in this direction because we're watching your style. And you know, that was one of my uh, hesitations when you first said, "Hey, come on up onto the show." Is like, oh, I'm going to be the worst guest you've ever had. <laughs> um, you know, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> But the biggest thing you said is, no, don't worry about it. Let's just keep it honest and, and let's just, yeah. you know, have a conversation. And that really influenced me. It's like, yeah, let's just have a conversation with these people. That's basically what um, it is. Like, so you, know, you, you just lower everything. You know what I mean? Like, you know, yeah. you just lower the whole thing and just make it an open dialogue with just honesty, but not hashing on anything negative or you're playing mm -hmm. politics. And you find it just goes kind of it's kind of smooth you know what i mean exactly you know what i mean yeah just, I mean, just be chill the way you're talking to people and you know yeah. that's one thing we noticed about you is you're, you're always very uh um relaxed you're not you know you don't get um you know stressed out it seems on your interviews you might be behind the scenes but <laughs> out of the camera it's like uh, he, he's he's got this and you know so we're sitting there looking at the same thing but from a printed uh, uh point of view yeah. You know, and, and one thing I want to touch on, you, um, you mentioned it uh, about the, the absence of the printed word. I think it's going to make a comeback because if you look at uh, Mang Romi's book, for example, uh, mm -hmm. this is not your normal martial arts book in the sense of, you know, pictures and illustrations of how to do things. This is a book that you, you can't read in one sitting. You have to read it, digest some things, think about them and go back mm -hmm. to it. So, you know, that's something I hope we can start to steer the, the magazine into that direction as well, making people think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, no, I, I hope you guys are, are getting to are, do that. So when did, so you guys, so Dan, when did you realize, and you might have touched upon it right before we get into the whole process of this, mm -hmm. when did you realize that you guys had something special here? Even though you didn't deliver anything yet as far as content, but besides that, when did you know, like, hey, you know, we're onto something here. You know, this, you know, I think we got something here. I think it was that number 27 for some reason. You know, the one day Jay and I were talking on the phone and he's like, we're up to 27 interviews. And I think we jumped from like 10 or 15 to 27 in a, in a very yeah, short I, remember, I don't remember exactly what it was, but. Yeah. Jay called me and I, and I remember him, like, your guy's number tripled. Or, or something yeah like it's just like when you see that exponential growth and you're just like okay we went from yeah. single digits to almost 30 in yeah. a couple of days and they're still rolling in that's when i knew like we kind of you know we struck a chord this was something people wanted and they wanted to participate in it mm. um, you know and then when we went from 27 almost tripled that it was like okay yeah and then obviously you guys were you guys know you had yeah. you got something going on. I mean, yeah. You know, you know what's funny we'll is see where it goes once. Would, 
Yeah, Dan and I would email each other back. Guess who's in the spotlight? Who's in the spotlight today? And it was it was just a, it was a constant back and forth of emailing of you'll never guess who just agreed to do this. It's like no yeah, way. Because I had posted that one thing in in the FMA discussion uh, you know forum about last call. We're still looking for anybody know, who's just, interested like, in contributing. And then I started getting a lot of uh, you know Facebook messages from from people. Jay was yeah. still getting them from his post. Right. And so, you know, we spent a couple of weeks just messaging back and forth like, oh, this person's in now, this person's in now. And then that's, you know, that's when the, the workflow um, organization really had to kind of kick in because. Yeah, 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 yeah. You guys were definitely. Um, let's go. OK, for the folks who are watching, obviously, I don't expect you to like every nut and bolt, but just walk us through the process of like. Regardless if they're submitting an article or you're or you're doing an interview, like the whole process of it, you know, like from basically start to finish, where both of you kind of get your hands on it and when and all that. All right. that I guess I can talk about kind of the written the written aspect of it first, and then Jake can jump in yeah. and talk about how he approaches the design. Uh, and this is one of the things that was part of that learning curve was we had stuff coming in from multiple sources. So we had mm -hmm. things coming in through Facebook Messenger, through through Jay's Facebook, through my Facebook, oh, wow. through his private email. And then we started the Angle One Spotlight Gmail address. So we're pulling, you know, material from four different sources and trying to keep track of all that. So what I ended up doing was once we figured out, okay, this is going to be this is going to be, you know, the overall list of contributors. Then we had to start looking at, okay, well, who's kind of ready to go now? Start putting together mm -hmm. ideas for issue number one. From there, I created a Google Drive folder and created a blank document with everybody's name on the top that was going to be in that issue. So there's a separate Google Doc within that folder for each person. And then whatever the source was, you know, I would pull it, copy, paste it, and then start working on it there. So there was like one central location, you know, Jay and I share that, uh, that, that Gmail address. So he could see it, I could see it. And then once I had formatted it and worked it over, you know, proofed it and, and put in some comments for, um, you know, any changes or clarifications that I thought would be useful, then we would share that doc with the writer. Okay. And have them look it over and give the final approval, say, yeah, this looks good. Um, it's ready to go. And then from there, that's where Jay comes in and works on the format mm -hmm. so when you say okay so jay as far as a format like you're meaning where you're maybe like putting pictures where they need to be as far as the written content and stuff like that well the, the biggest thing like i said uh, is this was an art project in, in of sorts so i wanted to have something that was going to look good mm -hmm. um so what what i was doing was you know i have um, a computer with one software um, so I would sketch out an idea using that software, but then I was pulling in other softwares, you know, apps on my phone and, and things like that. And I started, you know, inputting the picture into one software that's an online software, doing some work, putting it into another software, playing with it. Um, but then I also signed up for some courses just to learn how to do certain things. So, um, you know, for example, um, in one of our surprise things, you're going to see a stick and a, and a, a leaf on the stick. And the, that week's project was take a picture with something in nature touching an object of your topic. So, you know, I, I sort of, you know, sat there and went, what am I going to do? All right, well, I'll put a stick out on the, the street and I'll put a leaf on it. And then I stepped back and I, I, uh, I took that picture. And then, you know, I had some thumbs up from people that are in that little group. And they're like, yeah, that was that was well done, you know, and things like that. Okay. So I started playing with all these different things and it was like, oh, I can do this. I learned something new and I'd bring that in. And then it started to get too overwhelming. So I had to rein it all back. And I was like, all right, what's the theme? Build off that. And I scrapped a lot of designs, um, you know, uh, just to, to pull it back in, you know, for example. Mm -hmm. um, there's one gentleman from Australia uh the every picture he sent me had a wonderful blue sky so i was like all right we got to keep that theme going so what ends up happening is um in when you see it in the first issue um without giving it away yet uh you have a, a, a basically like a purple rectangle now inside that purple rectangle is the sky above my house 
and I put it into that purple rectangle, and then I modified it to, to make it look like a text box. And then that wasn't good enough, so I actually ended up taking a picture of my wall and put that in with the sky, and it popped out the lettering. So, um, you know, Dan was like, uh, what are you sending me? There's nothing but gibberish in the text. And I, I just, like, you know, had generic just typing as quick as I could gibberish just so I could see what the word would look like. Oh, the, how I, it looked at the inflection. Yeah, because I wanted it to try to pop out a bit, and okay. it was – He's like, what, what is this? You know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is gobbledygook. Um, so what ended up happening was I built the designs off of a theme. And, um, uh, you know, one of the guys uh, that we were interviewing, um, there's, you know, six of them. And I was like, this needs to be an issue by itself. So then the design work had to be one title page that, sort of is generic enough for all six of them but then they each yeah. get their own little flavor of that generic right. cover page okay so and, and still keep that theme going you know so um you'll see that in the surprise uh that we sent you that you'll play yeah um, which um i'm going to be showing shortly but you know i wanted to yeah. focus just to get an idea of the again the process so so you mm -hmm. so you of course do the outlaying what have you um Kind of, and then if I'm not mistaken, you send back to the person of choice or whatever, and they yeah and they kind of get exactly. The yeah, so like for example, using you as an example, Dean's in the issue. Um, so <laughs> I would take a picture or something, and I would send it to, for example, Dean. What do you think of this? Do you like mm -hmm. this? And there there was one picture I had a gentleman. Um, you know, I I thought he looked phenomenal and he was very serious based very stoic and um he's like well that's not really me i'm more of a you know i like the smile and i had a picture of him smiling and it was like okay i, I see what you're what you're going yeah, for okay, and okay. uh i i changed it out and it was the right call so sometimes getting that feedback from the from person the, yeah, yeah, um, yeah okay. you know and and you know i'm sorry to bother some of the people i've been bugging you know send me a picture please and you know, there was one gentleman, he was so kind uh, to go and get some photos taken just for his cover. And, um, you know, it, when you look at the before and after, it's a world of difference. A world of difference, uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's been great, the feedback and, and the conversations that I've been having. You know. I was going to say, I mean, far right. I mean, like, again, you've kind of given people taste. Of some of the artwork you know that's been shown mm -hmm. in my discussion i've seen sometimes your guys wall you know um i'm guessing feedback's been probably all positive i'm guessing right i have not had any negative I'm feedback I'm, whatsoever i'm not surprised you know, yeah, it's, yeah it's been great yeah and i don't Same think dan's had any no everybody's been really you know really good you know no, you, no, you, no, everything you i've seen the know, comments writing end if i uh if I say like I'm not 100% sure what you're trying to express here, like is this what you're yeah. getting at? If so, maybe try rewording it. You know, people are usually pretty good about that. No, matter of fact, people were like the 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 symbol you made for every discussion. I mean, people people loved that. They thought that was like that was fantastic, which we put in our banner now when we run a live video and all that. So that was people nothing but folks. I'm gonna show. Okay. We're going to play a video that these guys came up with that kind of shows what's coming down the pipeline. And uh, I thought it was fire what these guys made. So I'm going to be pulling that up now. And you guys are going to see it. And again, so you guys get full effect of it. I will be lowering all of us so you guys can see it. But again, um, I, I thought this was absolute fire. Um, and we're going to show. Okay. So I'm just going to pull this up now. Let's stop loading. So I tell you what, guys, I'm going to lower you. Okay. Yep. And um, all right, folks. It's almost ready to play. I'm gonna show, but you guys check this out. What they came up with. This is 
they showed me this last night and I was like, wow, this is just phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, what they made and uh, here it is. I'm going to show it now. I'm going to lower myself and show it. Fire. That was fire. I'm gonna bring these guys back up. Please comment what you guys thought about that. If you see if you're watching this, um, I thought that was just so well done. So so well done. So here, who was this a kind of a compilation of both your guys' ideas to come up with that? Again, I thought that was just so well done. Uh, could you know I saw both of these on that man I, I I just thought that when you got when you showed me that when you sent me that last night I'm yeah it was instantaneous I'm like this is this is gold I gotta play this people gotta see this people gotta see what you guys did so as far as that little piece kind of um guys kind of put your heads together and came up with it kind of collectively or well Dan, Dan had uh, talked to me about like how are we going to um, release, uh, you know, a teaser or something to get people excited. Um, mm. So I just uh, I, I played with iMovie on my Apple uh, computer a few times, and um, you know they they let you do a lot of the work. It's just drag and drop. It's really easy to do. But I was like, all right, well, I want to have something that makes people excited, and I, I played with around thirty different versions of that just to try to get, you know, something that would be upbeat and exciting. And, um, you know, so the first two issues are sort of put into that trailer. Um, one issue, um, you notice the, uh, the Filipino sun uh, pattern in the background. Mm. That's the first issue. And then you'll notice that uh, at the beginning, you'll see a bunch of uh, uh, pictures of the guys from the boudoir. That's going to be a special uh, issue and we've actually um, planned a couple of different special issues of people in the same system type of thing um, just to sort of have a theme based issue every now and then as well so so uh, there's our first two issues um, one on the the guys from the boudoir and uh, one on uh, some really talented uh, talented people so I, again I, I thought that was just so well done um, I, I thought for a teaser man, I don't think you guys could have captured any better than what you guys did uh i just fantastic fantastic um what um how did you you know here you're, you're getting all these names coming in and you know uh, you know obviously you guys you know a little overwhelming just by some of the magnitude of what, you know, people that are coming in not just by the volume of numbers but maybe some of the literal names that you got mm -hmm. coming in that want to participate in this mm -hmm. you know what like how did you guys go about choosing your first batch i mean you know, what was, was there a criteria or you guys just kind of picked out of a hat? I mean, what was it? Um, basically, um, the biggest thing for me was, um, you know, who's going to give me their article first? Um, how much work can I get done first? Mm. Um, that was a big thing because um, a lot of people that have contact, contacted us, we haven't had anything come in from them yet. Um, and then there's some people that came in right away and then some people that it started trickling in, um, you know, so that, that was pretty much how I felt we needed to go, uh, in that direction was what can we do to actually get an issue under our belt first? So basically who kind of submitted, got their crap together and got it into you? <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, and like I said, there's been a lot, um, yeah. during, during December, um, you know, COVID kind of delayed us a little bit. So mm -hmm. some of the messages that we got from people, we didn't get a chance to uh, 
to do anything with it yet, but we will. Yeah, yeah and it's, it's, it's time consuming to put it all together. Oh, I, I, you know, I to sit that. and yeah, to yeah. sit and read a couple of pages is one thing, but to sit and really closely read it and reread it, mm -hmm. and, and you know, uh, you know, look for spelling, grammar, punctuation, look for any part of the message that might not be perfectly clear. To, so to sit down and read something uh, with that level of focus is fairly time consuming. And then you know, on Jay's end, the graphic design, getting the pictures, making sure that the um, resolution of the images is good trying to find the right, you know, uh, theme to go with that particular person and, and creating the backgrounds and all of that and then bringing those two things together in the end. So, you know, once we get the, the material, it still takes quite a while to do that for six or 10 or a dozen people to put the one episode together or one issue. Together. No, I mean, I, again, I, I think it's, yeah, I, I don't think anybody watching this is thinking this is at all remotely a simple process. I mean, you know, I mean, you're, yeah. Like you said, you guys were having information come into four sources. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, that, that was, that was uh, strictly due to the fact that we underestimated how many people were going to be interested in mm -hmm. Otherwise we would have been maybe a little more streamlined from the get go, but you know, right, yeah, right. Um, learned. When did, I'm going to show, uh, you know, based on your guys' permission, I'm going to show who's going to be in the first, but before we get sure. to that, you know, what made you guys kind of decide whether, you know, as far as the choice of them doing an interview or they can actually submit an article? And that first, that's the first question. Second, what are you getting most of? So let's take a We're dance. Actually, uh, go ahead. Yeah. We're getting a, a good healthy dose um, of both. Uh, I think we're a little bit on the interview heavy side. Um, you know, for example, one gentleman, uh, I was talking to him and he goes, I would love to support you, um, you know, any way I can. I said, well, would you like to be in it? He goes, well, I can't really write something and, uh, I'm not really good at writing. And I said, well, how about I interview you? And it just sort of, sort of, that was my idea at that point was, Hey, maybe we can get more people if we interview them. So that's how we started from articles to articles and interviews. And then Dan had a great idea with um, with Andrea uh, Wheatley's article. Um, one of the things he was like, you know what? She wrote this pre-pandemic, um, this article. How has her thoughts changed since the pandemic? Oh. We should ask her some follow-up questions. So then we started sort of merging interview and article um, in that example, for example. Um, okay. We also have, um, you know, uh, we had to have a discussion of, well, there's some articles that were sent to us that were already published other places. Um, mm. And we decided, well, maybe we shouldn't do that as much as we appreciate the support. Maybe we should, you know, maybe interview that person about the article that they released or, you know, maybe do a follow up article on it, things like that. So mm. just so you're not taking one thing and just that's already been yeah. released, kind of shared around and just plugging it in just for the sake of having something. Yeah, make mm -hmm. it a little more original. I mean, yeah, not that, that the previous uh, articles or whatever were were not good. It's just mm. they're they've already been out. You know. Yeah, yeah. People have seen it. I mean, right. Yeah. So you know? we 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 felt that it would be more uh, exciting to to build something from scratch, and and go from there. Yeah. No. I definitely. Yeah. How about, you, what, how about you, Dan? Thoughts? Um. I really think it, it comes down to the individual. You know, if they want to support us and they have something in the FMA world that they have been thinking about, that they want to write about, that they want to put out there for, you know, the, the benefit or the consideration of everybody, um, you know, it's great if they want to put an article out there and, and highlight one specific thing or, you know, a series of things that, that are on their mind that they really want to dive into. Uh, on the other hand, it is kind of fun to come up with interview questions and get to know a little bit more about the person through their responses mm -hmm. and then generate some follow-up questions from there and try to keep that conversation going. Um, I think both formats work perfectly well. You know, I think it really just comes down to uh, individual preference. Yeah, yeah. I think it's nice that you guys are doing that, actually, that you gave them a choice. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think that's uh, like a... Uh, like and for me... Um, in another life, I was a, a cameraman for a, a news station. Before I became an English teacher, I was in the in the um, video production world, 
uh, had a film degree and spent a couple of years shooting news. So I'm no stranger to uh, interviewing people either. And like yeah, yeah, to, yeah. I just trying um, to generate a question that's going to elicit a good response is an art form in and of itself, as you know. Um, mm -hmm. You got to avoid the the simple yes no or you know direct response questions and leave things a little more open ended, and uh, and try to get people to open up a little bit and that is um you know something that jay and i have collaborated on with a lot of the interviews we've done you know we'll we'll start a doc between ourselves and start mm -hmm. pitching different questions and just see how it goes and then take the best of those and send them off to the individual yeah yeah i think again you know i, I think that's nice you know give them a choice um in my case you know i've been interviewed a couple of times so i figured you know, it probably I probably be better served to you guys and all that submitting an article as opposed to mm -hmm. people redundantly <laughs> hearing about my, you know, you know, hearing it again for like the tenth time or something. Um, but I'm going to take this. All right, so I'm going to show basically with your guys' permission. Sure. Kind of show who's yep. uh, who's up and uh, who's up and coming. So let's do it. All right, so this is that. So this is for issue one, right? Yep. Okay, so we have. All right, so we have William Bernas. Right. Grandmaster William Bernas of Bernas Estrocatus, um, an amazing uh, martial artist. And, uh, you know, thanks to him and um, uh, one of his instructors uh, under him, uh, Robert Parks. We got a wonderful article all about his system of Bernas Estrocatus. Wow, wow, awesome. All right, what we got? What we got next? So, let's go with... And no stranger. Mm. Ah, Montini. Mm -hmm. Montini has been very supportive. Uh, a lot of chats uh, on uh, Facebook Messenger. Um, you know, he actually uh, contributed two uh, projects: one an interview and one an actual article. Um, so uh, yeah, we're going to uh, have him in a future issue as well. But uh, uh, he's definitely going to be in the first issue. Yeah. All right. And you gotta love that pose. Yeah. <laughs> That's still okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Mm, okay. And this guy is actually going to be on the show, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Tuesday night. Oh, that's awesome. Guru Sean. Um, you know, one thing I, I, I want to say uh, with him, he was awesome with the support. You know, I had a couple conversations with him. I met him. Um, uh, the um, uh, Guru Joe had uh, an event, a uh, barbecue that mm. him and uh, Paulo and them, they all hosted. And he was there and I got to meet him there. And um, I actually traveled down to Toronto to his school and took that picture um, to try to, you know, get get something you know, working a little more with the photography part of it. And uh, he was phenomenal. Uh, I got to train with him that day, uh, learned a lot. Um, but I also got to see a, a different side of my project by taking pictures. I took a lot yeah, of pictures yeah. and trying to figure out which one suited the uh, the cover best. Awesome. All right. Who we got now, next? Now, Dean, if I can, one thing I want to uh, I want to stress, these are these sure. are um, mini covers that we did to sort of highlight who's going to be in the issue uh, gotcha. sort of, uh, help celebrate them but one thing the magazine is going to do is everybody gets a full cover uh, a unique cover to their article um, mm. but then also their article we're going to take that out of the magazine and give it to them so you know for example um, in uh, you know Montini's case for example um, he'll have that. He can post it on his Facebook group or on his website. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. anybody's article, they get to use it um, for the first couple issues that we're doing this for. Um, no, no problems from us. You know, you want to use it to advertise your school or your your system. Go for it. Right. 
No, which I think is is awesome. You know. So Grandmaster Rodell. Uh, there's yeah. another gentleman that was um, very supportive um, during the initial conversations. Mm. Um, him and his uh, daughter were very nice enough to, you know, chat with me, uh, answering questions. At one point, he didn't have access to a computer, so he hand wrote his answers on a piece of paper and then took a picture of the answers and sent it to us. Oh Poor Dan. You know, I, the first copy I sent him, it was, I, I goofed up on how I sent it to him. It wasn't very clear. So I had to send him a better copy of, of the, uh, the image so that he could read it. Oh my I don't know what happened. I messed it up, but, um, but yeah, so Dan had to transcribe, uh, from pictures, uh, some yeah, of the yeah. articles, but I mean, it was great that Grandmaster, uh, uh, the, the goof did that, you know, he took yeah. the time out of his day to, to do that for us. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, you got legend there. All right, let's, uh, who we get next? I'm just going in order the downloads that when I, uh, when I downloaded them from you guys. Okay. Okay, so, okay. So again. Mm. Yes. So, um, Reynaldo Marticillo, this was the gentleman I was talking about where the initial picture he sent me, um, I was having trouble with the, the image. So mm -hmm. he was very nice enough to take a few pictures. Um, this one just turned out great in my eyes. Um, it looks so badass. Uh, so uh, he was nice enough to be interviewed. Um, you know, we're still having some follow up finalizations to his interview, but uh, what a nice gentleman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know. And that was a, that interview was a really great look at the the Tapado system as well. Mm -hmm. That's uh, something you know. I'd seen some of their videos that they post online, and, and yeah. it caught my eye as an interesting system. And then, you know, to be able to read as I was proofing it and and whatnot, to be able to read more about that system and dive a little deeper into it was really cool. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's you know, that's, that's a wonderful thing you guys get to learn, and then piques your interest and you know mm -hmm. all right who else okay and next okay we got um okay i don't know i'm not sure um uh, hey paulo hey nicole yeah, I'm not sure who this guy is, but, you know. <laughs> The Scott Bakula of the FMA world. <laughs> so, I don't know what that guy is going to give or contribute anything worthy, but. <laughs> oh, man, you've been, you know, already a huge supporter of this, and you've done a great job for us, so, you know. Oh, I knew. When uh, you pitched the idea to me late August, September, whatever it was, I, I I knew it was gold. So, you know what I mean? Like I, I knew this was going to be a success, you know, just knew it, knew it, knew it. Um, all right. Who we got next? Okay. Um, what's your guys, are you guys going to try and by no means do you have to do this? It's just something I do on the channel. Just, but are you guys going to make a conscious effort to make sure you kind of, you, you get quite a few females involved there. Definitely, definitely yeah. want to do that. Um, you know, so the, the biggest thing is introducing ourselves to everybody. Um, yeah. You know, so what we'd like to do is, is you know, have more female instructors um, talk about the, the system. But uh, we'd also really like to, you know, get people that talk about how they teach it to children um, or even uh, people with uh, disabilities. Um, yeah, I could definitely so, give you a list of females to go I could definitely yeah do. that'd be great and, oh if, and if you're a female instructor out there and you'd like to contribute yeah, definitely um, you know, definitely do let that. us know yeah. yeah it is totally open anybody who wants to contribute is welcome to yeah, get, definitely this and get the ball rolling on that process and you know mm -hmm. obviously we're we've got a, a few issues lined up uh you know and, and that work is sitting there um but no reason we can't keep adding to that list and oh and yeah, yeah yeah contributions and and promoting anybody and everybody that's interested in in uh you know 
queuing up to get into one of the uh, issues that we're putting out. I mean, Definitely. depending on who we get, you know, that, that could form a new theme-based issue as well. So, you know, we talked about we already have a couple of theme-based issues lined up, but if we get some new contributions and we start to see, hey, you know, these people could all come together into one issue around this particular theme. Then, mm. you know. That'd be phenomenal. Yeah. I, and that's actually something that I don't think has ever been done is, is one issue, for example, um, dedicated to just female instructors or, you know, uh, handicapped instructors, things I like mean, that. Like, that would be a freaking great yeah. idea. We've, we know, we've, I've got, I've had a few episodes where it's been just all females. Um, they were, they were definitely theme oriented episodes. One was women's self-defense. I have one coming up on women's sparring that, and all that. So yeah, I mean, other than us, you know, I don't yeah. think, I don't think, it, yeah, I don't think anybody's really highlighted, you know. And it, it um, needs to happen because there's some really amazingly talented people out there. Um, I got to meet, um, you know, for example, yeah. Carlito Bonjac. I got to meet him once out in uh, California. Yeah. And uh, that dude was uh, not only hilarious, but, you know, amazingly talented. So yeah, there's I some people I, out there that are really Such a talented. fan of his. Um, oh, we, uh, we, should, we should say that with Robert Parks that you just had up there, too. Oh, ooh, ooh. I can bring him back. Please do. This is a, a very educated uh, gentleman, um, you know. Robert has really helped us out um, on a variety of levels. Number one, he contributed an article on DeCampo Original. So anybody interested in Jose Caballero's system, there's a wonderful article from Robert on there. And Robert uh, studies under Paolo Pagling and William Bernas. So he, uh, he's done a lot of serious training uh, elsewhere as well. Um, and he's a great voice uh, that needs to be heard because he's, he's a great author. Writing style is amazing. Um, and, uh, you know, looking at that picture, he is, he's definitely uh, a badass. I mean, this is a gentleman that also studied capoeira, for example. Uh -huh, um, so okay. he, he's, he's the real deal. And, um, wow. he's a great, he's a great guy. And, um, he's yeah, led a so couple I'm excited. of the, uh, the compo sessions that we've been in on. And <clears throat> one of the things he likes to do is, uh, with some of the, um, combinations is, you know, you, you do seven repetitions. And the last one, you go as fast as you can, and every single time, I try to try to beat him. I haven't yet, so <laughs> there's something to work towards right there. He's he's yeah, definitely yeah, yeah. skilled. Yeah, he's Very amazing. Skilled. Yeah, that's awesome. And uh, Robert Small just commented, maybe a veterans issue. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. Um, you know, veterans, um, they yeah. always deserve. Uh, our respect and our, our, our undying great gratitude for what they've done yeah. for you know, our countries, whether it's you know, Canada or the States or anywhere for that matter. And uh, I think that would be a great idea, Robert. So um, if you're a veteran and you're an FM, FMA uh, stylist, uh, let us know. Send us an email at angle1spotlight at gmail.com. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we'll definitely have you in there. Definitely. Ah, Dan Anderson. Dan the man. Um, yeah, super Dan. <laughs> so, um, you know, it, it's funny when I um, when I first uh, started working on the artwork for his uh, his article, I don't know why, but all I could think of was uh, Eddie Van Halen. Um, you know, just that that sort of energy, you know. And um, so you'll see a little bit of uh, Eddie's guitar kind of vibe going on in the in the background of his cover shot. And um, nice gentleman, um, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, great. Uh, yeah, uh, he's great to have him in there. Yeah, he. Um, yeah, just a little story on Dan. I think it's just worth sharing. Um, I forget what prompted him to call me one time. Um, I think I posted something for the discussion that I think it was. Uh, I think they had an element of frustration in my post. And he called me, he goes, look, man, you don't understand what you're doing. He goes, what you're doing for this community is incredible. And he goes, so don't let the small things get you down. You're doing something that nobody, but, you know, it was just really uplifting. Like, he absolutely, he didn't have to do that. You know what I mean? Like, he didn't have to call me. You know what I mean? Like, he could have just said, you know, hang in there, you know, or, you know, whatever. But for him to, like, take the time to, so that's something I never forgot you know, that he did. Um, so yeah, that's, again, definitely a good guy, you know? Mm -hmm. 
it's great to have them. It's yeah, and yeah. you know, I think it, it would be great to have um, you know more people that are you know willing to step up to the plate like that so willingly. Like, mm. um, I I love when people just email us out of the blue. Yeah, yeah, I know it makes the search mm. like. So, <laughs> makes it easier, but it's also yeah, really yeah. exciting because you, you get to feel that passion in in their in their um, their volunteering. It's great. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Yeah, it definitely makes it work a little bit easier. <laughs> all right, let's. Uh, all right, I think we got a couple left. There. Um, okay. So the folks uh, watching at home, uh, what do you guys think so far? Uh, is this going to be a big size issue? Because <laughs> you got 10, am I correct? 10? Yeah, yeah, 10. 10, 10 in ten. the first issue, yeah. yeah. Uh, Joel, uh, Joel Hunkar um, is, um, uh, I'll get to the, your uh, your question there in a second, Paulo. Um, Joel Hunkar, uh, Balintawak, the Campo. A uh, great guy from Western Canada. Um, mm. He uh, is another gentleman that uh, has been uh, just a great supporter. Um, you know, not only just behind the scenes, you know, listening to some of my ideas when I asked him, would you be willing to do this? Um, but somebody that uh, also gave me some suggestions. So great guy. Yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, the work he's doing with, and I think you had him on, Dean, and he had talked about uh, teaching children. No, Absolutely. I definitely I brought him on specifically for that and all that, and um, yeah, I I thought he presented really well. I thought he did a great job, and um, mm -hmm. there are a couple of really neat things that he talked about, and he had a group of kids there that he showcased some of the things. Yeah, if you, if you well. follow what he's doing with that, it's it's some great stuff. I'm a, I'm yeah, a big, no, it's not, it uh, seemed like it. Yeah. Big fan of the work he's doing in that area. You know, whenever I mm -hmm. see him post some new things, like you know about uh, his his kids' classes on. Uh, Facebook, I'm on the lookout for that sort of a thing. It's it's mm -hmm. something I'd like to venture into at some point in the future. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So I'm taking notes, you know. And no, uh, let me know. I mean, um, it, for sure. I still do teach kids. As a matter of fact, I just started back up. I Good. Started back last, um, just yes, um, Friday night was my um, first night back uh, teaching kids the stick class. Excellent. Um, yeah, we had a breakout, you know, just everything in lieu of everything going on and all that. But it was it was it was fun to be back, you know. Excellent. Um, um so Paulo uh he mentions, you know, is the magazine looking for sponsors? Absolutely. Um <laughs> we've already got a couple of sponsors right now. Um so for example, Tambuli Media uh has uh, been nice enough to uh help us out uh, mm. by uh, contributing some advertisements. Um, Combat Instruments Limited, uh, which is a, a great supplier for FMA gear, will have an advertisement. And Grandmaster Rodel Dokuk uh, with Smoking Sticks will have one in there as well. Um, but we're going to do something a little different um, for this, uh, for the first couple of issues. Because, you know, yes, the uh, first couple of issues are free, as we mentioned, because um, that was the original intention to have one issue for free. But um, we didn't ask for anything other than an advertisement from these sponsors. Because, again, this is our way of giving back. So if anybody out there has, you know, um, an FMA supply uh, company or books or whatever, um, let us know, um, you know, and we'll advertise for you as, as our thank you for contributing to the project. And then down the road, yeah, uh, definitely we would look for some more, um, if we're going to expand this, look for some more. Uh, help from from sponsors to help uh, cover some of the costs and things. Like yeah, that. as well as you guys should, you know. Yeah. Um, well, it goes without saying, after my discussion, we'd love to help where it can. So yes, and and you actually, sorry, I, I didn't mean to forget you there. Um, oh. You have you have an ad for uh, FMA discussion in there as well. Um, so you know that's going to be uh, that's going to be great as well. Yeah, and I I can't thank you enough. And but down, but I also want you know down the road we don't mind throwing some bills at you. You know what I mean? So you know we're not looking for a free hangout. So you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, last but not least, Andrea Wheatley. Yeah. Um, so her article is probably the one that um, got me really excited about where we can take this. Mm. Um, and, and this all came from Dan's idea because Dan had read her article. I had read it. We thought it was, you know, great. It was discussing online training is, is not really a great substitute for in-person training. 
Right. Um, so, you know, she really wants to um, explain the, um, uh, the importance of, of touching hands, right? You need to you know, have hands yeah. on. Okay. But when we asked her, hey, would you be willing to do a follow up and talk about how the pandemic has changed your opinions? Are they the same? Have they changed? She jumped in full force. Like she didn't even okay. hesitate. Um, so she was nice enough to to expand upon that article with some um, some really good, interesting f- uh, feedback on how COVID oh, has nice. changed her outlook. And um, you know, I think you guys will like it. Oh, I'm sure. So it's, it's you know, anybody who's lived through the last couple of years here of this pandemic knows it has really changed. You know, the game has changed a little bit as far as yeah. the value of any kind of online interaction, any kind of online training, learning. Um, you know, as a school teacher, I spent a significant part of last year teaching virtually. That completely changed the approach uh, in, in, in different ways. You know, you have to mm. adapt and adjust. And so it was really great to hear her follow up thoughts on that. I think people will be interested in, in reading the original article that was written pre pandemic. And then looking at the reflection the yeah. afterwards, yeah. So, and Paulo Rubio, I love your idea there as well. I, I definitely yes. the having the back page ads in the in the magazines, yeah. the page dedicated to different uh, you know I martial know. suppliers and and products and things like that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. For great sure. Idea. Definitely a great idea. Um, and, and not just and not just um, you know supplies, but. You know, I used to love seeing all the different DVDs that Panther Productions would offer. And things I know like back that. in the day, you would get to yeah, see. Yeah, books. Yeah, and, I know. Um, um, that's, that's one thing Tam Tamuli is doing for us yeah. is we have a select yeah. group of books that we're gonna um, uh, show, and that's actually one thing, uh, if I may, uh, mm-hmm. what we're we're working towards. We're not there yet, uh, but one of our goals is to have QR codes embedded into the article. So all you have to do is take your phone to the article zap the, the qr code and it'll take and you it'll to it for to example the, um, oh, a book okay, or a okay, dvd okay. or somebody's youtube page things like that so we want to also sort of marry the video content um that's out there that um you know people have or books and and sort of i think that's expand phenomenal. the universe so to speak yeah i remember you were explaining that to me um a distant phone call ago and I, I just, yeah. when, you, when you were explaining it, I'm like, that's a home run, man. That's a good no yeah, You know what I mean? People can yeah. actually, like, from there, just get to the person's content and link. You know what I mean? Yeah, to be able to go from the print page straight to a book about that system because it's piqued your interest or a YouTube right. clip so yeah. you can you can see in in real time the, uh, you know, the, the tactics or the techniques or whatever being discussed that, you know, right. That yeah. I'm really well, excited for when, when we get that up and running. You just dawned yeah, on Dan me. and I actually you started. Guys, Sorry, go ahead. You just dawned on me, you guys. Just gave me an idea to. I gotta send you the YouTube um, uh, clip or, or the info rather to the article. Um, sure. Yeah, that just um, yeah. Send, send it on. So, that. so one thing also, Dan and I, um, Dan and I were talking about doing was um, having a uh, sort of a, like a Facebook group that we were thinking of creating, where we have systems videos separated by system. Mm-hmm. So you could go to it like a library. So if you're like, oh, I want to learn more about Belinda Walk, well, you know what? Here's a bunch of links to Belinda Walk practitioners. Here's a bunch of links for KI. Here's a bunch of links for you know the Inosano Lacoste system or whatever uh-huh. and and sort of have it as a as a way of people you know can categorize their system because sometimes it's hard to find videos on a system if you don't know that it exists um so if you can run through a list of styles and go oh what is what is lightning scientific click boom yeah. there you go you can explore that and i think that will be uh, really good no 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 i i think it's I think they're all incredible ideas. So with all this, you know, in lieu and being talked about, general idea when the first magazine will be issued. So as you know, like I said, COVID kind of delayed uh, mm-hmm. things. First, Dan got uh, sick and then myself. Um, so that sort of put a lot of work. We, we fell back a little bit by about six weeks. 
Um, so we're hoping to have this uh, finalized in the next three to four weeks. Um, that's my rough estimate. Um, okay. And I'd like to get it out sooner. Um, so the plan is to try to, uh, to hammer as much down uh, next week as possible. Mm -hmm. I'm on afternoons again. So when I come home, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, I don't go to bed usually until, you know, five or six because I'm wired from work. So I'm going to try to bang out a, a couple hours each night and, and yeah. really you know, get it going. So like rough estimate, second week in February? Yeah, rough estimate, yeah. Yeah, no, I, th I think that's If fair. not sooner. If, if I can pull it off sooner, I will. Yeah. Um, it's just making sure, you know, that this also, um, you know, I have uh, a wife and three children. I, I you know, they have been yeah, no, tremendously yeah, yeah. supportive. Um, yeah, you know, without my without <laughs> my wife, man, I would not have been able to do half of what I've done in in the martial arts, uh, mm -hmm. you know, world. I mean, uh, she's gone on vacations with me just to a martial arts event, just so we can go to it and then have nice. a little mini vacation around that martial art event. That's how cool she is. So you know, I want to make sure that um, you know that uh, I don't interrupt that uh, lifestyle as well. So you know, so we're gonna try. No, 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 no. I think that's, you know, I think, you know, you said, you know, everything assuming that goes well, second week in February. Yeah. You know, I just want, I just think neat that we get you guys on here and people can kind of just get a glimpse and see what's coming down, you know, mm -hmm. and what you guys are all about. And we got, uh, so let me sure I didn't miss anything. Darcy, there's a, there's a rad guy, huh? That's fair. He's going to be coming back on talking about some. Awesome. Hopefully, he's going to come up with some ideas about health and outdoors training. And he's a, yeah, he does a lot of neat stuff outside. So I'm, I'm looking forward to getting him back on. And there's uh, there's a couple articles or maybe even a book to be written there based on some of the things I've seen. Yeah. That he's, up to. he's I'm just going to listen to him. He's just going to be outside doing this thing and talking whatever. So I'm just going <laughs> to. So I'm just going to sit back and act, it'll be me bringing him on. But it'll be me sitting back and him just running the show. Running the show. <laughs> Take it away. No, it'd be great. It'd be great to see. Like, you know. Yeah. Um, um, but uh, yeah, so I'm looking forward. So I'm just trying to make sure we cover everything. I yeah, I, I was definitely going to bring up about the link, uh, you know, mm -hmm. attached to each person's article, mm -hmm. um, which I, I thought was a phenomenal idea. You know what I do want to do? I have to run that again. I got to play that video again, man. <laughs> Let's do it. I can't, I can't help myself. <laughs> I got to do it. <laughs> it's just that good. And plus, there might be some people here who might not have seen it. Um, Survivor Man <laughs> FMA Edition. Yes, Brian. That would be yeah. awesome. All right, folks. If you did, maybe perhaps Thank you, you jumped in this late and you, you didn't get a chance to see this, check this out. This is kind of like the teaser for the first couple issues coming out, I just thought it was just so incredibly well done. I, Jason sent to me this last night, and I think my exact words were to, this is fire, or so, something to yeah. that effect. And uh, but I'm going to lower myself. Got love iMovie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just so you guys can see this, but I think even if you saw it already, it's, it's worth seeing again. <laughs> so, all right, here we go. Let me show me straight. Nope, I got to get this. Okay. There we go, folks. This is coming up. All right. <laughs> I'm lowering myself.
fire man that <laughs> was freaking fire yeah that was a lot of fun to do i, I love uh, how iMovie man. can take something and just make yeah, it look really that was cool. that was awesome that was that was uh um even paulo looked scary in that video <laughs> so up against the background it's, 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 I, if I, didn't know I gotta tell you you know the um <laughs> the funny little story about that you know he is hilarious and and such yeah. a great giving guy um well, we were over at uh, combat darts uh, in mississauga and uh, i was taking pictures of um uh, steve dinamo and uh, that's where i had that that nice serious picture and then you know paulo's cracking Steve up behind me, and and that's where I got that great shot of him smiling. You know, yeah, Steve, yeah, yeah. You know, it was there's a guy I want to really meet. He is awesome. Oh, uh, I want to meet him so bad. I'm trying, I'm trying to think, I, think I got to work with him. You know, yeah, I just like all his, those guys are. Yeah, his demeanor. There's just something about his his voice, his demeanor. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, I'm trying great. to figure like, and get over the great. border without. Being vaccinated, how I could slip through the cracks, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how that works. Um, but yeah, he's he's great. Uh, Justin is great. Yeah, no, no, I like um, Mark. James. Joe. Yeah. Yeah, Guru Joe is awesome. Now Joe. Um, you you know, know. I, I mean, James, uh, James, you know, James Lynn, I think is awesome, yeah. you know. Yeah, that I love fighting shit. him with the staff. We, uh, we got to fight it a couple times with staff. It's so much fun. You yeah, know, he's, it's, he's a a great, it's a great group, man. Definitely, yeah, yeah. they are great. And and yeah. you know what? As talented as they are, as, as knowledgeable as they are, yeah. they're relaxed. They're not, you know, pulling ego trips or anything like that. No, no, no. I, th I think and, they're and, very well grounded. So, yeah, yeah no, very, I mean, very yeah. awesome that way. So, mm -hmm. so, Darcy, let's find a way. Yeah, Darcy, you let me know how you guys can get me through the board. <laughs> well, you're out on the East Coast, right? Yeah, 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 can I get, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so you you, know, you could probably cross through New Brunswick way and then drive to Ontario, make it easy. <laughs> yeah. There's a few, there's a few uh, sneaky ways in. <laughs> yeah, we'll smoke you in the back of a car like the old drive-in. <laughs> Am I correct, though? It's you, you guys are not taking anybody in unless they're vaccinated. I'm correct. I'm that, right? not sure how that works, uh, to be honest. I, um, I know there's been some some articles that I've read. Where, maybe I'm wrong. I yeah, just I know some people know. were fined um, if uh, if they didn't um, if they didn't have uh, the proper quarantine or the proper test or things like that. So I'm not I'm sure just, how it works. Yeah, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you don't have to. I just I I could have sworn I read that somewhere. You had to be vaccinated to go into Canada, but I. Yeah, I'm not sure. Paulo would probably know because he does a lot of traveling. Yeah, yeah. Um, Somebody's got to know, right? There's somebody on here. And just that. Justin just said sparring invitation. So yeah, man, I can't wait to come down and yeah, and uh, you know train with you guys. You know they're they're, they're great. You know I love sparring yeah, with those guys. Yeah, I know. I that's a fun bunch. It look, appears to be yeah. a fun bunch. Yeah, yeah. Pa Paulo was actually uh, Paulo and Mark were my first two fights back. I hadn't fought in a long time um, since '97. Okay. My first fight back was Paulo, you know, and you know I've only gotten to, to work with them like a, a small handful of times, but yeah, yeah. the impact uh, was was great, man. It was it was great. So yeah. yeah, if you guys ever anybody ever gets a chance to train anybody from the boudoir, do it. Um, they're they're phenomenal. Yeah, we're gonna be. Uh, I'm gonna be having well, at least Paulo on, but Paulo wanted to bring some of the fellows with them. Yeah, the theme episode is gonna be on Science Lab. So mm -hmm. I have a couple guys that I've been working, you know, for 20 years now. We, we we don't officially have a name for our Science Lab. We just three of us have just been working together for 20 years. <laughs> um, but I like to just you know their lens on that and i thought it'd be a kind of a neat theme episode to do you know so mm -hmm. that's coming down the pipeline as uh that'd be uh, great well as darcy's outdoor adventure <laughs> that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be his theme episode <laughs> welcome to darcy's outdoor adventure <laughs> oh my god i'm getting punchy here <laughs> I don't know if anybody yeah. wants to do Survivor Man FMA edition. Yeah, guy yeah. whose whose strategy is called Last One Standing. Uh, <laughs> so I think you I, might have a little edge up on that one. Yeah, that'd be <laughs> fun. 
So, okay, future goals for not so Marshally, future goals for you guys, Marshally and uh, obviously the magazine. So, Marley. You want to go ahead, Dan? <sighs> Marshally, more grappling. I did a little bit of wrestling in high school and, um, you know, some, some uh, you know, unofficial, you know, work here and there with people I've met along the way, but I haven't really devoted a whole lot of time to it. So if I were to add one more thing at this point, it would probably be uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. That's where the two probably. guys that was quoting you, my training partners, incredible grapplers. That was their major. So I got exposed to a steady diet, whether I wanted it or not. <laughs> you know i mean the clinch work was you know phenomenal just because you know you're in it you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i agree with that i've been that. eyeballing for quite a few years and yeah. i really just you know pull the trigger and make it happen one of these days yeah you got it before you like i said uh, a little bit ago i have, I have four little kids you know the oldest is seven no man it's, i know you got it to get the you know, evenings gotta... away and and you know my wife is awesome um yeah. but you know to to go to do jujitsu twice a week and leave her with the whole bedtime routine on her own yeah. I'm, not sure. I'm not sure i could ask her to do that at this point so you know couple, when they're a little bit older maybe yeah that's a tough, but, that's a tough uh, i can find a class that that you know meets at a time when i can be there yeah I just got to look around and make it happen. It's even harder now with, with uh, COVID restrictions. I know there's a couple of schools. <laughs> One of them's not taking new students, or at least they weren't the last time I checked their website, things like that. So um, yeah, or just I'm going to make that happen eventually. Train with somebody, like, just get, like, even if you do basics and just, like, like maintenance, like, just basic escapes. God forbid if you got in a jam, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. How to get back to your feet. How do you get out from mount or side control? Like, you know, just... You know, even if you could do that, you know, you're going to find us, you know, wonder, it's, you know, um, yeah, I remember from, you know, my wrestling days, which were, you know, obviously years ago, uh, mm -hmm. it's a whole different animal, you know, you, you know, grappling. Yeah, but you're probably, because of your background, you know, you'll probably, I'm sure you'll adapt pretty well. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then as far as the magazine is concerned, you know, I just want to keep uh, producing these articles, you know, and. We've had so many awesome people step up, contribute, either an article or an interview. Um, so, you know, my goal at this point is to kind of streamline the process now that we've got one one issue mostly under wraps. You know, we're, we're putting mm -hmm. touches on it. Uh, and then take a look at the lessons learned from that and streamline the, the, the approach for the remaining issues and... Um, see where it goes, you know, see what kind of feedback we get and what kind of interest it generates once the first issue is out. Um, and just uh, kind of be open to the opportunity, see what happens. Yeah, you're not going to worry about running out of names. <laughs> I think you're... <laughs> Jay, what about you? We're, uh, we're podcast 245, so I know there's quite a few see? others out there, right? Yeah. Uh, for myself, um, you know, like, I've got a lot of things on the go right now. So settling into that and really sort of um, really hitting it hard uh, would be the first goal. Um, Marshley also one thing, you know, writing wise, I really want to get back into that a little more. Um, I have some ideas for some books um, that I'd like to see. Um, you know, there was a book years ago on Okinawan styles mm. where, you know, you had the style the lineage, you know, famous teachers, things like that. But then like what was inside that system? And then this gentleman had written this book all across uh, Okinawa. And what I'd love to do is a book like that on Southern Chinese arts. And then uh, I'd also like to do a book like uh, like Mark Wiley's book, you know, with mm. uh, some some people uh, from the newer crop uh, of people, um, but also highlighted a little differently. I'd like to see that that marriage of video and printed word. So have more video uh, QR codes because, you know, back in the day, you'd have to, you know, try to hand type a, a link that was in a book. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, it's annoying. So if you can just take your phone, go boonk, and, and That's incredible, in, man. I think that would be that would be somewhere I'd like to take the written word. Um, and I'd also really um, um, I'd really like to see where that can lead to um, and travel and interview more people and really highlight them the way they they deserve to be 
Yeah, one hundred percent. I know it's like uh, that's the best too when you when you you get in front of these when you get some in front of these people like like live or like or face to face. Like I got mm-hmm. a couple of things. Um, Tim Hartman is or you know like really good guy organizing stuff and you know mm-hmm. getting new people exposed. He's doing a couple of things, so I'm gonna be able to interview people like like right there in face, and that's that's always a nice nice change, you know. Because you're right there with the person, and you know it's. I mean, not that this is bad, you know. Obviously, better than nothing, but you know, if you can get the chance to be with the person, you know what I mean? That's, right. Mm-hmm. Well, that's one thing I learned when I was at uh, Sean's uh, Sean's school. You know, I got to see how to really bring out some of those pictures mm. um, just by his movements, and um, you know, I think uh, you know being there live is is it gives you a, a, an idea of the design element that uh, sometimes you don't get, you know, chatting over the internet. So it's it'd be kind of cool to see where I could take that. I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but this has been wonderful. Um, yeah, I'm so glad we made this happen. Yeah, we're, came on we're going and, on two hours almost. Yay. Good That's stuff, crazy. Though. So I'm gonna. I, was, I was worried we were gonna have less than ten minutes worth nah, of talking. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> I was like, yeah. oh. so I'm gonna download it. I'll share it to you guys all, and you guys can, of course, share it where you want to. And be in a group, but uh, yeah, I, I'm again. Thank you for coming on. I'm so looking forward to your guys' final product coming out, the first issue, and obviously the subsequent issues to follow. I, I think you guys are really onto something big, and I think you guys are gonna see success. I, I really do. Um, you know, we definitely, uh, you know, I'm going to be posting it all over an FMA discussion, definitely, you know, backing it up and giving you guys, you know, definitely the attention it deserves. So, awesome. awesome. We appreciate that. Thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate your support. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah, oh, my pleasure. You, you know, everybody that came out to, uh, to listen to us tonight. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And thank yeah, you to thank the, you just the FMA community at large. You know, we're, we're loving being a part of this. So yeah. glad we could oh, put yes. something together and, and give back a little bit. And, you know, just we're very humbled by the overwhelming amount of support that we've seen here. It's amazing. Yes. Can't say enough to thank you guys because it's been amazing. Well, I'm glad to hear. And I think it's just going to continue, as especially when your guys' work starts coming out. I think that's only going to, you know, grow and, and what have you. So, um, you yeah, know, I mean, I think it's fantastic. But, uh, well, you know, obviously we'll be in touch. Um, I got to send you a, a couple things and I'll wait till you guys send me whatever when you guys are ready. Yeah, I might, I might send a couple of the cover pages, um, you know, so people can see what it's going to look like. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, so. definitely. Post them and we'll post them for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. But all right, guys, I appreciate it. You guys have a good night and um, we'll be in touch. All right. Thanks, Dean. Have a good night. Oh, Thank man, you. Anytime. You guys soon. take care. Yep. Me too. Bye. Take care. All right. That wraps up episode 245. Yes. Yeah, so I think these guys are really going to be doing some great things. Um, I think when their final product comes out, I think everybody's going to be very pleasantly surprised at just how, I mean, their artwork alone, just, you know, Incredible, incredible. So, uh, who's next? Uh, who is next? Oh, Sean Zerger. Uh, I'm going to be doing that with Martin. That's going to be Tuesday night. Matter of fact, the test run is tomorrow night at 5 o'clock. Episode 246, Sean Zerger, is Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. And again, I'm going to be, um, Martin's pretty much going to be doing it. I'm just going to be there helping him out and all that. But I think Martin's going to have the majority of the questions. But if you do have questions for Sean, the flyer's going to be uh, going, matter of fact, going out uh, tomorrow morning. You know, let me know and uh, we'll get into them. But otherwise, uh, thank you to those who jumped in. And again, if you've not already subscribed to FMA Discussion, please do so. All our monies received from the channel go to charity. And the more we get subscribers and the more views, the more money we generate to give to charity. Okay. So if you can do that, that would be wonderful. In the meantime, uh, thank you for watching. And hopefully I'll see some of you Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. All right, guys. Good night.